for the week. Please join us on the prayer line Monday at 7 p.m., Wednesday at 7 a.m., and Friday at 12 noon. The telephone number is listed below on the screen. Beginning Wednesday, July 8th from 12 to 1 p.m., our own Brother Lowe will lead a seven-week Bible study on the I Am Statements of Jesus Christ from the book of John. Please contact the church office in order for us to send you the book. Please remember that the office is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9.30 in the morning until 2 p.m. If you need to drop off your offerings and tithes, we are available to accept them any of those days. Next Sunday is Graduation Sunday, and we will celebrate our recent graduates. Thank you for your attention to these important matters, and have a blessed Sunday afternoon. Say hey. 
So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. For he was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I would have, if there was a title for our message today, it would be, Your Celebration is Ready. Your Celebration is Ready. Now let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to come before you. Lord, we thank you for the fathers on this day. Lord, we thank you for their commitment to their families. Lord, we thank you for the dedication that they have demonstrated, the examples that they have set. Lord, we ask that this will be a day of refreshing. This will be a time of affirmation and celebration for fathers all around this world. And Lord, now as we go to your word, I ask that you would use me as your vessel to speak to your people. Lord, we ask that you would open our ears that we may hear what it is that you are saying. Give us spiritual vision that we may see the world to go ahead of us. Lord, now as I have read and studied, I lay myself at your feet. Allow me to be your humble servant and son in this moment that I may be fit for your use to deliver your word to your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. We're all familiar with the story of the prodigal son, how the son has asked his father for his inheritance, for the portion of the inheritance that befalls him. I find it's important for me to realize that the inheritance that the son received was the father's money. That's something that it draws me because when I look at what I have, I have to thank God for everything that he has deposited in my life. As I, as a prodigal son, made decisions to go out and to express my independence, that I was able to go out with everything that God had given me. And this part of the son is no different than many of us today. We are all very familiar with a part of the son. It was not uncommon. It is not uncommon for men and women to get to a point where we decide we want to go out and explore the world for ourselves. And so we're looking at this son who decided he wanted to go out and explore the world for himself. And he went out and he, the Bible tells us that he spent his whole inheritance. And after he has spent the inheritance and he found himself feeding the hogs, and the Bible says that he looked and he would have even eaten the food that was prepared for the hogs, but there was not even anyone around to give it to him. And I look at that and I thank God in that moment that he says the, the prodigal son came to himself. Sometimes it takes being alone to force you to come to yourself. It's an interesting thing that many of us can experience that when you are enjoying or walking in riotous living, when the enjoyment is over and you have nothing else to spend, we often find that there is no one else standing around. When I have nothing to give in riotous living, that lifestyle has nothing to give to me. I don't know if you've ever found yourself as the life of the party, all the way up until the money end. When you stop spending, everybody was gone. Everybody can call on you to get something, but when you look around, there is no one to give to you. Not an uncommon thing that the prodigal son dealt with, but the Bible says that he came to himself, that he shook himself, that he woke up, and I believe in this moment of our nation's history, and in fact in the world, there is a grand awakening happening for many prodigal sons and daughters. We are at a point where we were faced to look at COVID-19, and we're still 
dealing with all that it entails. And so finding ourselves there sheltered in place, alone, we had nothing to do but look and to say, I have wandered away and I have squandered all that has been given to me. And many of us have looked, where do I go to find food and shelter? Where do I go to find sustenance? Who is there when my inheritance is gone? What do I have to show for it? when we look at the social unrest that we're dealing with in our nation right now? There is an awakening that something has to be better than this. We're seeing across the world as black men and women are coming and going saying enough is enough. We're awakening to our father's house that there's something greater on the other side of this pit that we have been in. We don't have to wallow and wonder and beg and hope that someone will come and feed us. We are awakening to say, I have a father. I have a heavenly father who within his house has all the sustenance that I need. And so we're seeing men and women who had made a decision to go out and to live independently and to explore and to take the gifts and the talents that they have and give them to the world. They're now looking, how do I come home? And that's where we pick up because we're familiar with the prodigal son. But on this Father's Day, we would like to take a minute just to look at the father, to see the love that this father had for his son and to have this model of what Christ has laid down in this parable, how we should look at our heavenly father. The passage of the Bible says that the son got up and went to his father. And it says, but while he was a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And if I stop right there, I thank God that he recognizes me a long way off. I have to imagine this young man walking home, coming down the road, head hanging down, practicing, rehearsing his speech to his father. No doubt he had no shoes as the father eventually gave him shoes. His clothes would have been ragged and torn as he had spent his time feeding the, the hogs and in the hog pen. No doubt he was dirty and disheveled and looked nothing like the young man who left home head high with a bag full of money. Yet the Bible says that the father saw him a long way off. I thank God that he recognizes me, that I once was that prodigal son, and on my road home, walking home, head held down, God saw me a long way off. He didn't require me to get to the doorstep and make a long apology, but he saw me. He sees us coming home as he's calling his sons and daughters to come home. He recognizes us a long way off. He's not put off by the things that we went through while we were gone. I thank him that I don't have to make an excuse for what I went through. It doesn't keep him from seeing me. God is able to look past the prison sentence that we had uh, acquired while we were away. He doesn't care about the tracks in our arms while we were out exploring ourselves. He's not a God that is concerned with the way that we live. He says, I see you and I recognize you. Nothing that you did while you were away keeps me from seeing who you are. There's something about a parent looking at their child. I know my child. I can see you a long way off. I thank God for my Heavenly Father who saw me a long way off. He recognized me through all of the dirt, through all of the disheveled state that I was in. Hair matted up, hair gone. He says, that's my son. The message today is God sees us a long way off. For those who are at that awakening and you're walking home, hold your head up because your father is there and he recognizes who you are. He is not blinded by the things that life has thrown at you. He's not blinded by the way the system has beat you down. He's not blinded by the way that you receive prison sentences that you didn't even deserve. He's not blinded by the fact that the laws were twisted to keep you out of opportunities that should have been yours. He says, I'm looking a long way off and I see you. And I'm thankful that once he saw 
The Bible tells us that he saw him and he was filled with compassion. He doesn't look at me with judgment. When he sees me, he's not looking at me with a tisk, tisk. I knew you'd be coming back here. But when he sees me a long way off, his heart is filled with compassion. The Bible says it's the love of God that draws us to him. And I'm thankful that that compassion calls him, as the Bible says, the father ran to the son and threw his arms around him and kissed him, even while he was a ways off. So the Bible tells us that if we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. While the son was walking, practicing his speech, the father filled with compassion took off running towards him. The message for today is that God is moving towards you as you are moving towards him. It seems like a long road home, but it's going to be a lot shorter than you think because God is moving towards you, closing the distance. He sees you and he's filled with love and compassion that you are coming home. This awakening that's happening our nation that is letting you know you have a father who's there waiting on you. You have a house. You don't have to stay in that condition that there is greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And you don't have to stay on the outside. You can head held high, come home because there is a feast, a celebration is ready for you when you get here. He recognized me. Thank God that he recognized me, that he saw me, because what that tells me is that he never forgot me. Because he recognized me, it lets me know that I was in his mind all along. Every day, every time he walked past the window, he looked to make sure I wasn't walking down that street. There was never a time I wasn't in his heart. He knew I would be coming, and he continued to look for me. He made sure that he would be able to recognize me because he never forgot who I was. No matter what we go through or what we have experienced, when we take our prodigal moments, our Heavenly Father has not forgotten who we are. Remember, that was his inheritance. He knows what he has put inside us. And the Bible says, if you train up a child in the way he should go, it will not depart. It's only a matter of time before we come back home. And in this awakening moment within our nation, where we have decided enough and it is enough, and we're walking home, he recognizes us and runs to us. Next thing, the next scripture in 22, it says, but the father said to his servants, interrupting as the son is preparing to give his speech. He has humbled himself. And he's ready to just be a servant. But the father says to the two his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on, the feet, on his feet. Bring the fat calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. So I thank God that not only does he recognize me, but he restores me. Our Father is waiting to restore us. It's just, it's not about simply coming home. It's not about walking in, walking back to the church, and just sitting in the back of the pew. The Bible tells us that the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. So when we come home and we make that walk, he restores us. To restore means to build up. It means to constitute or reestablish. This father in this moment took the time to reestablish or to build up his son. The gifts that he gave was a role. First he said, quick, bring the role. The robe in this moment signifies honor, for the robes were given to guests of honor when they walked into the house. And the Father says, I want you to bring the best robe. I want you to know who's walking back into this house. I don't want you to forget who he is. When you look over, the minute you see him, I want you to see he is someone of honor. I'm restoring back to him with his robe, his position of honor. Then the Bible says, it says, put a ring on his finger. The ring signifies his authority. I've given him honor, and he also has authority within my house. My son has come home, and he has authority within my house. And then he says that he gave, he said, put sandals on his feet. The sandals represents his position within the house. He is not a servant, 
coming back. He is not relegated to the space or the place of servanthood, but he is a rightful heir within this house. So I want you to put sandals on his feet. And the message that God says to us as you're coming home, I don't care how long you have been gone. I don't care what you've been through. Don't let the enemy tell you that you have been gone too long. Don't let the enemy tell you that you won't be accepted. Don't let the enemy tell you that they don't remember who you are. He says, my gifts and calling are without repentance. Your position is still secure. The inheritance that you walked out with, that talent, that gift, is for an anointed time. And God says, when we come back, I'm putting you back in your position. Come on home. Come on back to the church. Come on home. There's a position waiting for you. And I'm going to restore you back to where you are supposed to be. I thank God that he has restored me. I thank God that in my best attempts to mess up his anointing on my life that I wasn't able to do so. I thank God that in what the enemy thought was destroying me, God was building a testimony by my decisions that will allow others to see his faithfulness and know that they too can shake themselves and come because our Heavenly Father is waiting and will restore us to the place that he has called us to be. I'm restoring you, God says. Come on back. Come on home. I am restoring you. And then the Bible says that this father, this father of the prodigal son that's often not discussed, it says that he reconciled. The pastor says, for this son of mine was dead and he is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they begin to celebrate. Reconciliation means to change or to exchange. It's often used with money. It is to make things right by exchanging. The Bible says that in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21, God tells us that all this from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The exchange was my sin for his righteousness. There's the, the reconciliation that brought the peace in the relationship between me and God was my sin for Christ's righteousness. And in this moment, as we look at this father dealing with his son, he says, for this son of mine, for this son of mine, in that statement was a statement of reconciliation. It was the statement saying that he was dead, but now he's alive. He is my son. I've recognized him. I've restored him to his position. But now I want everyone to know that he is within this house a son. And I don't know anyone that's ever felt like this prodigal son. I have. And you appreciate the fact that he recognized me. And I thank him for restoring me to the position that he had for me before the foundation of the world. But there's nothing like reconciliation. Tell me we're okay. Father, tell me we're okay. My cousin will say, are we good or not? And in this situation, the father is saying, we're good. This is my son. In that one declaration, everything has been wiped away. Just call me son. Many of us are looking, we're walking home and we're asking our fathers, just call me son. I appreciate the position, but let me know that you're not ashamed of me. 
Let me know that walking back into this home, I am accepted as son. The father's son, no doubt, lifted his head and smiled. His heart had to rejoice in the fact that the father says, you are my son. God is saying to sons and daughters today who are finding themselves in this awakening as the social unrest is happening across the world and we're realizing that life is bigger than the riotous living that I was enjoying in the past and it's time for me to come home. God says, come home, I made it right. Your celebration is ready. We're waiting on you to celebrate. There's nothing holding up the celebration except for you making that decision to come on home. That prodigal, the father of the prodigal son, shows us what it means to be a father. He lets us know that one, I'll never forget who you are. No matter what you have gone through, you are mine. I will always look beyond everything that the world may throw at you and see my son. And because you are mine, I'm going to restore unto you everything that I have proclaimed you to be. The enemy might have thought he had you, but you have lost nothing that God intended. And then he reconciles us. There's peace. Now, I have a peaceful relationship with God, whereby I cry by the Spirit of God, our Father. And in that cry, there is a healing that the world never could have offered. And so we thank God in this moment. And we say, if there is one who realizes in this moment, you've come to yourself and you say, in my father's house, I don't have to live like this. We encourage you now to start taking that step towards God. Don't worry about the tattoos. Don't worry about the marks. Don't worry about anything that life has thrown at you while you were awake. Your father knew it all, and he's waiting for you to come home. The church needs what you have. God is standing saying, I never forgot who you were. We encourage you now, the Bible says that if we would just believe and confess, that we would be saved, that we would have a nation. Bless you.